Hey everybody, I'm Andy and I'm here with Maria and today we're going to be looking at a clustering project. We're going to be clustering supermarket transactions. So clustering is one of the most used type of analysis here in graphics and it's inside of models. And what we do in graphics with clustering will be identifying different patterns um, along your data and then create different groups according to those patterns. And those groups are what we call um, clusters. Exactly, and how do we calculate clusters? We use factors. So in this data set, I'm gonna send most of the variables to use as factors. Um, these factors will be used to calculate the similarity between rows in the data. So in this case, customers and similar rows, similar customers are gonna be grouped together. So not all of these factors are gonna be useful. I'm just gonna admit some of them here. So Stuff yeah, like definitely. So the variables are just the different columns that you have in your data set, and you don't really need to use them all for your factors. Exactly. So I'll get rid of some of them here. And that's it. So we've got 13 factors. I'm going to click next. I'm going to call my project something like clustering 1,000 supermarket sales. Click execute. And that's going to build me a project that looks something like this. So in this case, what we're doing is clustering customers for from this supermarket. We're doing customer segmentation. But can you tell me any other example where we would like to use clustering? Yeah, clustering can be really, really useful across industries. So maybe in um, to take the example of sport, if I wanted to find players that were similar to Lionel Messi, but they didn't cost as much as him, I could run a clustering analysis of all football players and look for players that were grouped very, very closely to Leo Messi, and then perhaps look for ones that were less expensive than him. Yeah, that makes sense. That sounds very interesting. Um, okay, so what do we have here? We have a network visualization or a graph, okay? So every one of our thousand uh, customers in the data set is given a circle on the graph, and these clusters are very, very nicely defined and they're grouping customers uh, that are similar, closer to one another. Right, so what I would do here first will be color mapping. Um, color mapping is coloring the whole graph using one variable, and it's a quick and easy way of seeing some insights. Exactly, color mapping can be really, really useful to find patterns instantly. And I think one of the most important variables in a data set would be the, uh, in a supermarket data set would be the price of the products. So how much are these uh, customers spending? So we've got these two variables here, quantity and unit price. Uh, and if I apply color mapping with this raindrop icon, I can see immediately there starts to be a bit of a pattern, a bit of a trend emerging in the graph where customers towards the lower end of the spectrum mm -hmm. uh, are colored more yellow and these are buying more expensive products and ones towards the top are, are buying less expensive products. Yeah, and what about quantity? Let's see, so exactly the same process, just repeat with the raindrop and very, very interesting indeed. So we've got a similar trend, but instead uh, customers at the top of the graph tend to be buying more, uh, a higher quantity of products. So they're Although there were cheaper products, they're buying lots of them. But I'm starting to be drawn to this little corner of the graph down here towards cluster 10 because it seems like these customers are buying lots of expensive products. Yeah, I would definitely just focus on that one. Exactly. So we can do that uh, by clicking on the cluster 10 value from the UMAP cluster variable. And that's going to select just customers in cluster 10. No, so we've got 57 customers in cluster 10 and all of our sidebar variable charts are now representing values for customers in cluster 10. By changing this to relative, these blue bars start to shift and um, these gray bars represent the values for everything in the data set and the blue bars represent values for just customers in cluster 10. So immediately looking at this unit price chart, I can see, yep, these customers are buying more expensive uh, products and they're buying more of them. And what type of products are they buying? Let's have a look. So if I go to the product line, we can see that these customers in cluster 10 are buying mostly food and beverage items. 
Yeah, so what if we filter by food and beverage so we can see how they are? That's a good idea. So if I apply another filter, I click on food and beverage. Now I've just got values and customers that were in cluster 10 and bought food and beverage items. And I think there's plenty of trends starting to emerge here. They are mostly females, right? It looks like these customers are mostly females. What would be the next logical step that we would maybe take to find some insights, Maria? Um, I will check on income since they are buying a lot of expensive products. Yeah, that's a good idea. So if we go to the gross income variable, ah, we can see that most of these customers, in fact, pretty much all of them are towards the wealthier side of the spectrum. So it could well be that we've found the most valuable customers to the supermarket, the, the wealthier customers that are prepared to spend more money. But I also see that they pay mostly in cash. It does say that as well, yeah. They're not That's interesting. That. that is interesting. Um, and where are they based? I wonder if we can find out more by looking at the city variable. So, yeah. Now, this is a data set from a Myanmar supermarket. So we've got three cities, Yangon, Mandalay, and Nakator, were all big cities in Myanmar. And it seems like most of the customers here are based in Nakator. And they mostly buy on Tuesdays. Yeah. Do you think that this the supermarket maybe already has a promotion to entice these customers in on Tuesday and Wednesdays? I mean, since they are buying a lot on Tuesdays, I will say so. But if they are not, they should start doing it. Yeah. I mean, this looks like a really obvious example of um, an ability to direct marketing action at these customers. They're a really valuable customer base. They're coming into one store on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and spending a lot of money. It's, it's kind of uh, immediate insights here, really. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yep, so that was very interesting. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, and we'll 